Okay, so <clears throat> one of the big steps away from Windows or Mac is sort of productivity. And now, in a lot of my videos, I've looked at stuff like, you know, editing packages, DaVinci Resolve, gaming, all these kind of things. But there's a bit that really, you know, and I actually went, I've done a video, I'll link it up in the description about the sort of apps you can use to replicate your Mac experience. <clears throat> but there's one thing that sort of has floored me for years with making the jump. And that's Microsoft Exchange. It's like, you know, it's one of those things where if you're part of a corporate environment, you have to use it. I mean, you Google, you're fine. You know, Google plugs into anything, but uh, Microsoft Exchange is a, is a tricky one. It's even harder. When I was being a Mac user, it used to be hard enough to hook it up with a Mac, let alone on Linux. Now, there's been some sort of attempts over the years. There's like plugins and bits and bobs. There's a thing called Evolution, EWS, which links in. But it's not 100% seamless and it's not an easy user experience, I don't think. So that's the big thing. That's like the final frontier to, to get away from Windows or to get away from Mac. And it's nothing to do with either operating system. It's to do with Microsoft, obviously. I mean, we'll look in a, a moment. I mean, obviously Word, Excel and those kind of things, you can replace that. That's not the problem. But Microsoft Exchange is the biggie. And one of the big things was... If you work in a small team or in a with a larger team and you do things like shared mailboxes, that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare on a Mac as well, it was. I don't know how it is now. Where you had to make your own app specific part. It was just and if you were working with an IT a group of IT people, like you know, an IT, you know, they'd hate you because you're the Mac guy. And we had a I was in a place where I was I was like three Mac guys in a place of hundreds of PC users. And you've got different requirements than the rest of the league. But now, I mean, you know, as you move to Linux, it's even worse just because of Exchange. It's, you know, so what I'm going to do, because something's about to be released, it's sort of partially there, but it's about to be released, which, which is a real turning point, really, for this, for me anyway. And it's like literally the bit that went, I don't need that anymore. Now, obviously, if anybody goes, well, you can do it online, you've got web, no, screensaver, you've got web access and all this. Sometimes there's times, on your laptop especially, where you don't have web access and you need to have your email there. So Microsoft Web Access, yes, great. But you, sometimes you need it local and you don't have internet. So you need to refer to a document or something that's local. So, you know, even with, with Google, unless you used IMAP or whatever and pulled it all down locally, you don't have it. So anyway... So something that's been released, I think it's this month or next month, and it's, remember this, it's Thunderbird, Thunderbird 145. It's the 145th release of Thunderbird. Now in Thunderbird 144, they integrated EWS, so you could get mail from um, Exchange Web Services, which is great. Thunderbird 145 goes a little bit further. It now allows you to use the biggest stumbling block for me, which is shared mailboxes. Which is basically, you know, you've all got your own mailboxes, but you sometimes have company ones where things come into and you all need to see what's in it. And you couldn't do it um, before well, there was an app, Owl or something, not Owl. There was a couple of the, hang on, Evolution EWS did it, but I tried that and it sort of crashed a lot. And then there's a thing called Owl, which is a direct link, but I think you can only do that with one mailbox. Anyway, so 145 is not out yet. It's in beta, it's beta 4, and you can get it from the AOR, the beta version, which I'm going to show you. But then hopefully that will be released, and they've made it really simple. I remember like Thunderbird was, when you installed Ubuntu or any other Linux distribution, there was Thunderbird, and you click open it and you go, oh, I don't know about that. And, you know, even when I had it on a Mac, because I was looking, looking for something that was better than Mac Mail, but not Outlook. I hate Outlook, especially on the Mac. It's just an unpleasant experience. So I was always looking for something different and you'd always get Thunderbird and you'd click it and you go well I don't know about that but it's come so far it really has and now with the Marchy you can have it on there and the bit that got me it's even got the Tokyo Night theme based on the Tokyo I think it's based on the same Tokyo Night theme that's in a Marchy that you can put on the actual thing anyway with that massive pre-ram amble out of the way let's just have a look at some options on here for productivity on a Marchy and um, see where we get to so let's dive in Okay, so 
here we are <clears throat> on de the desktop now pre-installed with a march you've got libreoffice which is which is great and uh, if you you know does your word processing type stuff it, it works really really well so there it is so you know we've got two real choices you've got a thing called wp wps i'll show you that in a second so you've got a, you know a couple of choices with wordpress you don't even need to go that far i mean let's get rid of that if you go to hang on cosmic if you want to know how to put the cosmic store on amarchi i'll put a link in above there's a script you can use because it's a nice store anyway so in here this is cosmic store so if i look through it's all flat packs so if i type in wps there's wps office which is another one you can use which does all your office needs it's, there is a paid version of it. it's eight pound 95 a month for a version with ai or three pounds 90 a month or something for a non-ai version but it's up to you i mean you've got ai you, you know if you go super shift a you can't judge gpt so what you fundamentally do is go you know open up your ai and, and basically copy and paste what you've put in there put it into your ChatGPT, correct it, copy back. So you don't need to pay for an AI, do you? Because you're paying ChatGPT in the first place. So there's that. And then I think LibreOffice is in here, but you, it comes installed LibreOffice. Now you can also, I'm just showing you this, I'd install everything through the AUR. I wouldn't do it necessarily unless you really want to through Flatpak. So you've got, um, oh, what was the other one? Thunderbird. So here it is, Thunderbird. So there it is, and currently it's version 144 ESR, which is basically their like safety release. Um, but you can obviously, if you go into the AUR, which we'll do in a second, you could find the beta version. So that's Thunderbird, but there is loads of mail clients on there. Claws Mail, there's like MailSpring, Proton Mail, all sorts of mail. But and that's great, and it depends on how you work. But the thing is, if you need to connect, as I said, to exchange, your options are really limited while well, they were. Uh, but you know with thunderbird 145 it's sort of going to be okay anyway so let's get rid of that let's just do the aur thing so install and go to the aur and then if you look for thunderbird there uh thunderbird can i spell not today you can't <laughs> thunder thunderbird 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 Now, it is in here, and I've spelt it wrong. Thunderbird, ESR bin, beta. There is a Thunderbird beta version in here somewhere, if you could find it. But you want Thunderbird, Thunderbird git. I've got it installed. Mind you, if I just show you from the other way around, let's do the ins uninstall thing, remove. You see the version I've got. There, Thunderbird beta bin, that's what you want, but you'll find that in the AUR because I've got that installed. That's the bleeding edge version. So let's bring that up. There you go, Thunderbird bleeding edge. So, and up it comes. Now, I've got to grey bits out of this, um, obviously, because you don't really see everything here. But um, let's go into that one. Okay, so you've got your mail here. And then you've got your, your panel over there. I mean, this is a mail program, this thing is. So what you want to do is add a shared mailbox. So over here, you go new account and email. Now you get this account hub thing. So I'm trying to think of an account I can use. Okay. Let's try this. Okay, so this is a shared mailbox. Continue. And it launches Microsoft Authentication, but you don't want to log in with your that account, sign in with another account. And I'm going to sign in with my master account, which is my own email name because it's shared with me. And sign in. And it'll ask me for the authentication code. He says, there we go, type that in, yep, and we're off. And now it's going to allow me to 
it should, he says. It's trying its hardest. OK, so it's found it, whatever that is. I need to click that one. Use your Microsoft Exchange to sync service. Hopefully, Thunderbird, yep, continue, finish. And now that account's been added. That's the shared mailbox, and it's that simple. So, yeah, so, I mean, I'll come out of this. It does do the errors up here, but it's because I'm downloading so much email. All right. So there you go. I mean, that's just a really simple thing. And that sounds that's like the most ridiculous thing, but being able to use Exchange Web Services, doing shared mailboxes. I'm not sure about the contacts and stuff like that. I mean, but it looks like they sync up. I'm not sure about calendar, um, but I don't use that as much. I mean, but you've got your own calendar. So, you know, there's ways to get around this. But for me, it's because I have to keep looking at these shared mailboxes for things like that. It was something I just couldn't do. It's it's like a game changer. It means I can actually just go, okay, I can put my email on here now. So there you go. So Thunderbird 145 is, you know, that's beta, so it's a bit flaky. But I mean, when it comes out, which is this month or next, it, you know, it's brilliant. I mean, it means that you can actually switch over, for me anyway, from, uh, from you know, Outlook. I mean, the what the end game is not to have Exchange or Microsoft at all, is it? But you just sometimes can't work like that. I mean, personally, I'd use like, you know, Haymail domains, or that would be enough. Um, or even, you know, not so much Google, but something else. There's tons of other solutions. I mean, but Thunderbird links into everything else, probably. The only one that was problematic is always been Exchange, and it's always been a huge barrier. So with that, that's really, you know, beneficial. And, and hopefully, going forwards, I can literally switch off that Mac down there and not have to use it again. And then my next laptop will be a framework and I can have a March on one, a March on the other. And then just that's me done. I'm, I'm out of that world, which will be quite refreshing, actually. Anyway, I hope that's useful. Thanks for watching.